So we'll call the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. on Monday, April 29th. Um, any adjustments to the select board agenda that uh, folks would like to see? I have one. Mm. Um, I'd like to put it in under the road report. The, there's just an old uh, planning commission thing that was approved by um, the former select board, which none of you were members at the time, that's been kind of sitting in a can somewhere for a long time. So I just wanted to bring it up again. Um, it has to do with uh, posting some different spots on the town roads for um, non-vehicle use, like mm -hmm. bicycles or people walking their dogs or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so well, it just, the road crew never really gets to it at all. So. You're, you're the only one under road report, so I guess. Yeah, so we can do that. Yeah, It'll be and, quick. and possibly maybe um, towards the end of the meeting after updates and other business like the vandalism, um, a policy review, just a po quick policy discussion, and we can decide if, okay. if uh, at that point, if <clears throat> how long we want to spend on it or if we want to kick it down the road. Um, and then I guess I would also suggest, because I haven't been able to look at the bills and payroll orders, that we move that towards the end of the meeting okay. as well, okay, to approve those. Um, and so is there a motion to approve the minutes from April 9th and the 22nd? I'll take a motion to that effect. All right. Any discussion? Hey, was the 22nd last week? Yeah, it's pretty short minutes. Did we, I like don't know if I even saw any, but okay, um, well, here's, I'm happy to short. talk real quick. Yeah. Or we can this, this wait and only approve oh, April 9th. I did see that. Two of us um, signed this last week, but you didn't, so. Right. We can send that over to Robin. You feel about good about those minutes, Liz? Yep. Okay. So if there's no further discussion, all those in favor of approving the April 9th and 20 minutes from the 22nd, please say aye. Aye. All right, both of those are passed. Um, is there public comment? Hearing none, we'll uh, move on to the town clerk's report. Um, I would like to thank the road crew for grading up the parking lot at the town office. Mm. Very much appreciated. <laughs> cool. And we have received a permit for access for work to be done on the county road by Greenwood Lake. I thought we already signed that. Nope, this is a different that's one. It's a different one. This okay. Is a different one. Oh, okay. So that's for. You guys to sign. And how's that work done by? Mm -hmm. You mean so, somebody I, else I is doing know. work on, uh, cap, on the. I'm yes. going to not sign this because it's my husband oh. who's involved in it. <laughs> well, so I'll, you can, well, you can tell us what, it, what it's about if it's not clear on here. doing an electrical service, so they're going to have to um, go under the road. Oh. Okay. Cabin 59. But he's not going to do the work. He won't be doing the digging, but he'd be like running the conduit. I assume. I haven't talked to him in detail about it. Oh, does he do excavating? Does he have a? Uh, I see Alfie's name on there. Yeah, oh, okay. It says that already. Yeah. Um, well, it's not a duck stockler or whatever. Yeah, yes. It is that person. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I can. I had to look into this and for the uh, new parking thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, this fellow has a last camp. Um, before you get to the bend with the guardrails on Greenwood Lake on the back South side. or north? North. Of the fourth of those four? Yeah, of the little ones. North, um, okay. His power line got knocked out by a tree last mm. year, so uh, Tim is going to rehook it up, but um, it's going to go underneath the road mm. um, to the camp, and Alfie is going to do the work. So. Okay. Seems reasonable. Well, we'll do that like we did the one last week. We'll just. Um, have the three select boards sign it. 
Although I'll just not sign just because it feels like a oh, that's right. Okay, well, conflict two is good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you already said that, didn't you? Uh huh. The permit is issued in accordance with relative language with the town city of Woodbury. That report does not release the applicant for me. Da -da -da -da. Restrictions and conditions. Don't mess it up. Hmm. And this is the 29th. Oh. Yep. I always do that wrong. Woodbury dated at Woodbury. 29th of April. 2024. Thank you. And I received a reminder notice from Central Mount Regional Planning Commission that the that we're receiving this email because we applied for the intent for grants and aid funding. Yeah, that's on the agenda for tonight. Okay, because okay, they say the deadline is May 10th. May 10th yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And I have um, the solid waste for the appointment for whoever you're going to appoint. Mm -hmm. And other than that, mm -hmm. Pam was able to get the payroll done today. Okay. And that's normally Brandy's. Yes. Yep. And we had an extra little hurdle this week because they're replacing Brandy's computer. Oh. So yeah. when she went to do the 941 on the new computer, the password weren't there. Uh, so just luckily the old computer was still there, so well. she was able to get onto that one. But I don't uh, think hmm. I got anything else. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Just uh, time. Yeah. Mr. Cerruti. Okay. Do you want these numbers that Brandy did up for our last select board meeting? It's her financial statements and that. Did you? But it's for those mm -hmm. ones that you just signed. For these, we uh, that we will yeah. sign. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sure, if you want to leave that with us, we can prove those. We'll move that to the end of the meeting so we can. Yeah. And I, you need this back? I think Michael will need it. Yeah, I was going to ask mm. if there's an extra copy. That, you know, you can me, have it. Help me <laughs> you can oh, keep it. Oh, okay. <laughs> can we look? We'll look at it. Those at the are those end numbers when we that she and always we'll rattles off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Never wrote them down. Michael does. <clears throat> Thank you, Robin. You're um, Paul, you're just in time what for else? the. Yeah. Sorry, my. Uh, Early. Trying to get a couple fires together, but doing a quiet call, just walking out the door. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so my report will be short. So we're still grinding away with FEMA. I believe mm -hmm. we've got two of our three projects closed, although I keep getting emails saying they're not closed. So mm -hmm. I did have an email with a phone call with the FEMA guy, Terry, and he said we're good, but we're still tangling over the building. Uh, last meeting I had with FEMA over the building, as they said, they weren't going to give us anything. And then I said, how can that be? I had a guy standing in front of the building in October telling me they were going to give us $1.3 million to build a temporary building. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, oh, yeah. And they looked at their notes and said, oh, wait, no, we got us those. I don't know. You're experiencing the same type of frustration, I'm assuming. Still? The FEMA? Yeah. Yeah. So apparently they read their notes. So now I have gotten more emails that say they're doing something toward mitigation, but I don't know what that is. So, so there we are. The mitigation on the... The old, yeah, the old station. So the reason this is an issue is it will morph right into the Sanders yeah. funds is we've got to come up with matching funds to spend the Sanders money. Mm. It don't include the money we've already spent because we would be supplanting yeah. funds. That make any sense? It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. It makes government sense. Yeah. So um, that's why I'm working toward trying to maximize whatever... FEMA will do because it'll help us toward that. So goal. we can use that towards our match. Toward our match, which I think is twenty five percent of whatever project. Oh, okay. Which, which if we spent all the money, it'd be three seventy five. If it's partial, you know that's what I'm saying. I just don't. 
Hmm. Did speak with USDA last week. He didn't know anything. And the people that I need to talk to who know things were supposed to be back this week and supposedly will call me. Hmm. So that's the what I, where I'm at with the... I, I want to propose hmm. the project to them of recreating that square footage here attached to the new building as a separate project, which I think gets us overall to a better place because we'll have one building, one heating system, one one everything. So that would be the goal. Um, we, we've masked it out with the architect and the engineer. It fits on the site. It, it's manageable. Mm -hmm. um, we just got across. I'm trying to get USDA to say, yeah, that's an eligible project, project because it was going to cost quite a bit of money to do the planning and preparatory work that they want to apply. So I don't want to spend money and time on it if it's not an eligible project. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Paul, can I just ask a clarifying question? Sure. So, I think I know the answer, but somebody came to me with this question, yep. so I'm, I'm going to re-ask it. Um, the Sanders money, yep. the reason that that cannot just go towards the cost of the new fire station, rather than in addition to it, is because the money for the new fire station has already been allocated, and so it's therefore ineligible Correct. for There's the Sanders money? Correct. There's actually three reasons. Okay. Because I had a meeting with Misty from USDA probably just before, maybe a week or so before town meeting. And so cause I was didn't know this was going to happen, but I wanted to be prepared for town meeting for the same question. Because mm -hmm. the, 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 the thing has been, should we wait, continue to wait, continue to wait mm -hmm. um, to see if this money shows up? I honestly didn't think the money was going to show up and almost fell out of my chair when it did show up because it's sort of like winning the lottery. Mm -hmm. So there's three issues that come up. Number one, we didn't do a level one uh, environmental study before we did any work over there, problem one. You could you could stop and do that study now, but it's probably gonna delay about oh. a year. Um, oh, Jesus. Thing two would be um, our bidding process that we use to obtain the contract that we have didn't meet the federal guidelines for their bidding. Um, I, I, we did, I thought we did, but apparently whatever newspaper posting wasn't adequate, so anyway. Oh. Um, to, to fix that problem, you would have to terminate the contract we have with the current contractor and rebid it. So we're again losing another year. And I've been experienced, I think we experienced a, a $75,000 price increase between October and March. So mm. again, one of these, you keep delaying, the price just keeps going up. And I don't really see that changing. Interest rates are stable. So you think you high. might have to go out to bid again? Well, no, oh, we're okay. under constant, so so we'll get to that part. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and third third reason is their requirement that we can't supplant funds, regardless of how you obtain funds. If you already have funds, if you were to turn them back in and then try to use their money, you've then supplanted the funds. Yeah, but we your whole project hasn't been approved. It's only been like one hundred and eighty-five thousand sure. dollars one year. And, Two hundred. Yeah. Yeah, there's no long term. Right. Well, they consider the loan funding. But there's no loan. We do have a loan. Oh, okay. Yeah, we do have okay. A loan okay. Okay. All right. I didn't yeah. realize. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot well, about that. The, okay. that the, where I wanted to go with the loan is we can stabilize the price for the town by mm -hmm. switching it to a bond. Eventually, to, yeah. To work yeah. together on in the future. Okay. Um, that would be the goal. That would stabilize because again, these 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 commercial loans are ten year arms. Mm -hmm. Price could go up and down. Mm -hmm. So that kind of answer your question. It a little frustrating. Yeah. I, I share everyone's frustration because <laughs> uh -huh. it's while it's exciting to be able to fix the problem 100 percent, it's also going to be a big lift because mm -hmm. the application's hundreds of pages, I think, and it requires mm -hmm. studies. And I got to hire an architect, the engineer. I'm going to try to use the, all the same people. So if they say, yeah, it's okay you can do that, then I've got to do all that, do a level one site analysis, oh, which is geez. five or six thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it doesn't need level two, I don't know what that costs. And then we would have to, i got to have the architect design it, you know, mm -hmm. enough of a, of a design to get an opinion of probable cost, and then the engineer would have to say, yeah, that works, and the civil would have to say, yeah, that works. And then we could get those budgets and submit that. And in the meantime, you'd be also working on the buyout? Is that where you would get your well, money? Well, I don't even know where any of that's going because I can't. I'm really no, frustrated with this whole process. I can't get any straight yeah. answers. I get smacked in the face. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. in, in this process, what's happening is everything's a maybe, a possibly. Um, you could do this and we could do that and mm -hmm. possibly this. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had a pretty 
short-tempered meeting with FEMA and the people from mitigation because I said, look, we've been playing with this since you know, uh, January and we've been going down this road. You've asked that on the building, on the old station, I said, and we need answers. I said, I'm tired of spinning my wheels. I'm tired of wasting my time. Mm. If there's no money here, then tell me. We'll close it out and we'll stop wasting our time. And they were, that's when they kind of backed off. Oh, wow. I guess we made a mistake. So I don't know where that's going at mm -hmm. this point. So that's the thing with USDA. Is I, we would finish the project we're currently under, which would hopefully is supposed to be starting here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the building has been ordered. So the building's being pre-built off-site in panels. Whoa, so really? So I've seen the submittals are approved. The trusses have been approved. They're ordered. How are you going to do an environmental study if there's a building already well, sitting on it? Well, you can do an environment. I think mostly it's a paper study. Really? And they can dig with me. Yeah, they won't, I don't know what a foundation is. I mean, how much digging can they do on that tiny little lot? Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> we, initially the engineer wanted us to do soil analysis, which wanted to go there and dig 12-foot deep holes. Uh. Yeah. under the building, which is oh. going to cost around 15k, oh. mm -hmm. and then he said if that wasn't adequate, we'd have to do test borings, and I said, no, we're not doing that. This is a not a, this is not an intense building. It's a, it's just a wood building on a concrete slab with frost walls. There's nothing, and so we And there up. wasn't a, a gas station on top of it at one time or anything like that. And the problem we're running into is with an engineer's department, engineering is nobody wants to be responsible for anything. <sighs> You know, so it's like the retaining wall. I sat mm -hmm. there with two engineers three times, mm -hmm. and not one of them would take responsibility but on what to put there for a wall, but nobody would approve anything. Mm -hmm. So they're finally going to do something. I just not sure what that looks like entirely yet. Either. The engineers are finally going to? Well, they bicker over whose fault it is. Do you support the, build, the, wall, the bank with the wall, or do you put up a retaining <coughs> wall, or what kind of retaining wall? One guy draws a retaining wall, the other guy doesn't like that retaining wall, so we got a different retaining wall. So we have a we have mm -hmm. a budget in there for retaining wall. I just don't know what retaining. So the guy's supposed to go over there, do some digging, and then we'll figure out what that looks like. I'll be really happy when I see somebody digging. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that part of it so far? It's it's a good question because it's the same. I would love to have just it'd been the easiest thing just to spend it. Um, even meeting with USDA, she's like, if you pulled the plug on this whole thing, you're looking at one, one to two years mm -hmm. to get restarted, and you see our current circumstances, mm -hmm. not, which is why we kept moving. I really had a conversation about stopping last fall, but again, it's like throw the dice, you need to get the sevens, you know. Mm -hmm. That was where we were at, and with, and with our, at the time, we didn't even have insulation or heat, so mm -hmm. we decided to go ahead, and here we are. Got, got the loan, and so therefore we want the money. So. Um, can I ask a question? Of course. Seeing that you're you, the way the bid went out into the newspapers, it wasn't what they wanted as the feds, is that correct? That's what I was so, told. So, do you have to make sure your architect and your contractors are on some kind of a federal list? No. So I asked them about the the architects and the contract and the uh, uh, engineers. No issue with that. Okay. Which I don't understand, but the only thing they're concerned about is the site study, or the site environmental study, and the bidding process for the building. Okay. So what I want to do is make sure it's a good path to go down. We'll get the planning done. We'll submit the proposal. We'll finish the project we're currently working on. Close it out. And what I've asked USDA is if it's an entirely separate project, is that eligible? Mm -hmm. She initially said back in February, yes, it is, but I want to make sure before we spend a lot of time and money on it. Mm -hmm. um, the state gave us a variance for the sprinkler system, the fire sprinkler system, but uh, with USDA money available, they're going to make us do that. So that's another piece which I'm happy to do. It's just another piece we have to design like a 20,000 gallon water storage tank and a diesel fire pump. and. The whole building, not just the edge. You got to do the whole building. Yeah, oh, they were. They gave us. They gave. They gave cabinet variants too, but cabinet has to has to move out of their I have temporary saying, new. It doesn't make. It makes zero sense. They built them a nice fire station, but they have to move, move out of it by two years from now. Mm. They, won't, they can use it to store mm. golf carts or something, but they can't put fire trucks. <sighs> Which is why I didn't have to take their offer to build a building over on our site because. Mm. We would have to find it. You get where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. The guy said, that doesn't sound like it makes sense, but it really does. I said, no, it doesn't mm. make sense. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, 
So that's uh, USDA. I do want to invite you, I just don't know a date yet, if the board would be interested in coming to when we do the groundbreaking over there. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know. I, I was trying to find out from this. I just wanted to have an excavator mm -hmm. there to be a, a backdrop for the thing. And so I want to be close to when they're actually going to start. So I'll just email you, is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've got to be a sure. My view of this is it's, a, it's new construction in the village. I think it's a big, it's a super duper plus to the community. Mm. I'd really like everybody to be... Oh. involved in this. When you say excavator, you mean you have to borrow a town excavator? No, no, no. They're supposed to drop their equipment okay. off over all there. Right. Okay, good. <laughs> no, we're done with all that. They're supposed to be digging. I just, I'm just trying to find out when yeah. someone's actually going to appear okay. over there to yeah. actually do some work. Remember the movie The Money Pit? Why'd you give him $10,000 because he was willing to take it? I sort of feel like that. Is like, I've heard a lot of like, this is mm. all going to happen. Mm. I haven't seen any, any shovels yet. I'm ready to see yeah. some work happen. Mm -hmm. but, Oh, well, we'd love to be invited. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> the last thing I got is uh, update on our, our intense drug activity. April arrived and our call mm. volume has doubled oh. from March. So we went out to two to three times a day some days. Uh, after the shooting in Hardwick, the bad boys transferred back up to town. So we've already had a really ugly overdose and an assault in the last week, mm. all mm. associated with the same folks. So our, our little rolling band is back apparently huh. in various locations so has there been any um <clears throat> i know you and patrick had talked about yep. getting together have you guys had any more conversations about yes yeah, so we had one okay. meeting yeah and then we have another meeting on wednesday mm -hmm. I, I mean again we're sort of talking about i, I think we're, we're and i'll let them speak we're, we're kind of looking at a town forum maybe mm -hmm. another um maybe another like, online quiz people can take of thoughts and I, th I think Alton is going to end up with a town forum with people to discuss. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what the model was in other communities, to see, you know, see what people's ideas are. To, mm -hmm. you know, there's not a lot we can do other than encourage police, more police presence, and be aware of your surroundings. I know I myself in my own area just kind of shoot mm -hmm. people off when it happens, but I'm not recommending that to everybody. <coughs> you know, not of action, but. Um, yeah, so. I had some interest, uh, an interested party who was interested in participating in the conversations that you and Patrick yep. are having. Are you currently taking more people into those conversations? So, so you take anybody, or? have them get in touch with Patrick. Okay. There was one other person that wanted to participate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I know he was, he had mentioned when he came to the meeting that he was looking to limit it, at least yep. initially. Just well, I haven't contacted him. I know one other person okay. said they wanted to join and Patrick mm -hmm. said, yeah, go for it. Okay. So. Cool. I, will do I that. can look at it more the better. I, I don't have a lot of time to put into that right now, so mm -hmm. yeah. others that might have. It, it's really a worthy conversation. It's taxing us pretty heavily. It just, mm -hmm. It's like someone flipped the switch like the 4th of April. It's like... Mm. Hmm. So is this assault something that uh, was just within a group? I mean, it's not like yeah, somebody it's, walked into somebody else's house. same group of folks. Well, okay. you can rarely find out exactly what happened. Oh with all the folks, you know, mm. no honor among thieves mm. type thing, you know, because he said, she said, yeah. and you did this yeah. and you did that, and I don't really get into that, you're not dead, I'll fix your cut, whatever the problem was, and then the police have mm. to go try to sort all this mm. out, but okay. Thank you get them back into tough scenes, a scene where it was a fresh assault, we're told it's not safe, they say the guy's gone, so we go up to the scene, you know, there's a knife on the table, mm. you deal with it, you know, so you mm. just... It's, it's one of those, yeah. you're always kind of like, is this safe? And who's coming up the driveway? And, right, right. Right. Mm. So, well, again, to keep mm. you on top of aware of what's happening, things have picked mm. up. We've had we've had some, uh, they've shot your road signs, I see. Yeah. Um, three so, of them. It's Somebody about $10,000 worth of damage yeah, there. Or two. All. And they, uh, they, you think uh, they got three of them? No. Yeah, they shot this one. Well, it's only three to shoot now. Well, no, they shot two of the three. One's right. day, but shot the one down by... They didn't shoot this one. No, they haven't shot that yet. And the other one... And then we've had them setting some fires along the side of the road, oh. uh, mattresses and stuff we've had to go deal with a few mm. times. Um, we've had to put sharps containers in our vehicles because we're, mm -hmm. we're taking the time to clean up needles. You know, mm -hmm. with them at the water tub, some guy let his kid out where they filled it, and I'm putting the fire out, and there's exposed needles on the ground, so... I'm having mm -hmm. the guys, I got sharps containers for all the rigs so they can pick up this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, mostly just for your awareness you know what's happening. Thank you. Yeah, th issues. and thanks for doing it. Yeah, no problem. Like, uh, like I just want to keep people least. safe. <laughs> mm. How about, yeah, I wonder about Green Up Day. Are they 
Gonna have any of those? I don't know. Kind of? Well, if you don't, you, know? you can use a uh, just a, a soda bottle, you know, like a two liter soda yeah. bottle. There, just or a milk jug or something. Cap yeah. on. They're perfectly yeah. safe. Mm -hmm. But if people aren't, aren't wanting to pick up needles, a cap needle, I wouldn't be too nervous about. But be really careful who's picking up uncapped needles. Mm -hmm. not aware how to handle. I didn't think of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paul. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> That's my short and sweet report. All right. And I'll keep you informed mm -hmm. on, on uh, we get to actually have a, have a uh, groundbreaking. Please do. Mm. Great. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. Hopefully we'll have some movement with the feet <laughs> on the next few weeks. Just in the last 24 hours, I've gotten an email scheduling a meeting, cancel a meeting, scheduling another meeting, and then telling me not to go to that meeting. No. Oh. So, well, right? Um, Am I missing it? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Hey, Thank you, yeah, you Thank too. You. Thanks, Paul. Right, bye bye. That's you. So moving on is the road commissioner's report, um, and Alfie is on vacation. Um, we had said that we would uh, ask Alfie about road grading and get back to Monty. Maybe would one of you mind just letting him know that Alfie was not here to yeah, ask questions? Yeah, I can do that. Great. Thank you. And then, Michael, you're gonna. Um, I have this. Um, this is the letter of intent that Robin mentioned. I can give you a little background on the letter of intent if you would like, um, or or not. Um, it says, let's construct one or more road best management practices to bring connected road segments into full compliance with municipal roads general permit standards, which I assume are water quality. Yeah, this is the MRG BP yeah, mitigation. It's, it's, a year, a it's a yearly thing. So, yeah, and basically um, the letter of intent gets Woodbury on the list. I think they collect the number of towns um, that have an intention of doing some work during fiscal year 25, and that's how they divide up the pot of money mm. um, to decide what each town gets. Um, we do this every year since the Municipal Roads General Permit um, has been in place. Um, I did talk to Alfie about this and because right at the moment we have um, three outstanding um, grants and aid projects. Um, one that we got an extension for, for FY23. Last year's FY24, both the Better Roads and a grants and aid permit, which the flood you know, obviously blew away any intentions mm. um, towards those. But um, we would have until uh, June of 2025 to, to do a project um, for this. So um, if we didn't get to it this year, we do have... So this would be a new project? This would be a new mm -hmm. project, yeah. Well, can, you, can you remind me of the funding for this? It comes from um, comes from the state. It's uh, Agency of Natural Resources and VTrans are sort of the two entities that oversee it now. Um, and the Municipal General Roads Permit was set in place um, kind of post Irene and and also with the federal government getting after the state about the quality of Lake Champlain water. Mm -hmm. um, so. The program is kind of designed, as far as town road crews are concerned, to um, try to check any type of erosion from roads into any waterways, brooks, or um, whatever. So all of the roads that um, qualify for this have to be hydrologically connected in the runoff. Um, so, and that's kind of what we go by for different projects. Um, so do you need, do you just need a, a motion from the select board to be the duly authorized representative? Um, at one point I remember sort of being uh, voted out to be the duly authorized representative, but this is really seemed to me to be asking for the town governing body approval, so... Um, <coughs> well, it thinks we need both. I mean, we need a, to um, vote to submit this letter of intent, mm -hmm. and then we need to decide who's going to sign it. I would prefer that the select board sign it. I don't, I don't. Okay. I'm, I'm the primary contact person, okay. and Robin is the secondary contact person. Okay. Well, I'd make a motion that we uh, <laughs> uh, 
submit this letter of intent to participate in the uh, SY SFY 25 Municipal Roads Grant in Aid, and I'm happy to sign it as the chairman of the board. So important. Any discussion? I think it's a good idea. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the letter of intent does not commit us to doing a project in FY25. But, um, but if you think of something. Yeah, if Alfie <laughs> thinks of something. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm sure he has. Well, once, once we get done with all that stuff. Okay, so I will scan this and send it mm -hmm. to the proper person okay. tomorrow morning. And I'll put it over here so that we can get it. And so, Michael, did you have something else that yeah, you wanted? I, yeah, I just wanted to bring up this. Um, so, um, I think it was in 2021, the Planning Commission came before the Select Board. Um, I was a member of the Select Board then, and Chris was, and Paul was. Um, and one of our Planning Commission members, uh, Michael Sadler, who was an avid biker, um, was aware of different back roads in Vermont and Woodbury that are kind of blind sites for if a bike or a group of bikers are on the road and the car is coming the other way. Um, so he wanted to just have some signs in place to let people just be aware that there might be other people either walking, riding a bicycle or whatever on the back roads. Um, and it's and not just a share the road sign. Well, actually, no, it's not a share of the road sign. Um, this is, so I have, I printed this out. This is what we presented to the select board back in the day. This was the sign, there's three of these, that um, the planning commission came up with. Um, and it just, nothing has happened. It was approved by the select board to do this. Um, and nothing has happened at all. The thing that kind of, rekindled my interest in, in this is that I noticed in my bike riding this past couple of weeks that the, the roads did get posted for a group biking tour through. That was the one thing they do every year. Yeah, and there, there were several that happened during mm -hmm. the summer. Um, so it just seems like it would be, I mean, the road crew is gonna be incredibly busy this summer. It, it may not happen, but I just didn't want it to kind of, be forgotten. Mm -hmm. So has someone decided where these should go? Yes, Michael Sadler provided maps um, and where they and should go. And numbers of... Uh, he, had, yeah. he did a mm -hmm. whole thing that he presented to the select mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. um, and I can ask him to, to resend that to, to you folks if you'd like. The only thing that all, uh, always <clears throat> confused me about this one, it says bicycles may use full lane. Or people they're they going to think that that means they can use the full road? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it would seems depend, confusing. I guess, on how, what the bike person um, thinks when they see the sign. <laughs> I mean, it's not like there's a lane with a line on each side, a yellow line and a white line. It's uh, right. just... Yeah, I mean, you, we can, we can rekindle well, this and discuss mm, it. And, um, so, no, but at some guys. point... I do, I also have some concerns about the wording, just about people misinterpreting it. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I know you guys have already made a decision and the former mm -hmm. select board has already okayed it, so I, I hate to, you know, it take steps the backwards. The decision can be remade. Um, the other options are on the back of that. Board. Okay. Um, I mean, as a person who uses a bicycle some on the back roads, I just keep my ears open for cars. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and try to be in the opposite lane mm. of when they show up. I mean, to me, like what I would love to see, because I run into it running, There's, mm -hmm. I've run into you on your bicycle yeah. and I'm running, and um, mm -hmm. we, we both um, have met on one of those corners. Mm -hmm. And to me, just a sign that says blind corner, like mm -hmm. would kind of cover all bases and yeah. maybe be the most direct. And none of these seem to like kind of yeah, none of them really address the thing. And if mm -hmm. we wanted to come up with our own sign, um, you know, the road crew could have them <laughs> made up at a pretty, pretty inexpensive cost. I don't think these are off-the-shelf items. I think they'd have to be made anyways. 
whoever stamps yeah, out. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know where the where, the, where the, all those signs. So it sounds like from the board's perspective, it, it, it keep the conversation going, but mm -hmm. um, maybe a slight tweaking of the language. Okay. Is that what the board is? I would. I mean, yeah, I hate to complicate it. Um, but I just do feel like this leaves room for confusion. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree with you. Full lane is, mm -hmm. what does that mean on the right. road? Right, yeah. 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 And is this telling the bicyclers to stay on one side, or is it, I mean, I think it's intended to, well, to show that the, the drivers, the, the car drivers, too. Bicycles we'll are supposed to use the lane of traffic. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. um, I mean, when I hear a car coming and it's mm -hmm. coming behind me, I get over into the other lane. Mm -hmm. If I hear a car mm -hmm. coming towards me, I get in the lane that I know that they won't be in, <laughs> um, just to be out of the yeah. way. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah. But so, so you'll um, let us know when you want to put this back on the agenda. Sure. at a future meeting or do you yeah. want it to be like a recurring agenda item no um what i'll probably do is is rekindle a conversation at the planning commission meeting with, uh, with michael who was mm -hmm. the main mover um, okay. behind this. could i make a suggestion sure. um mm -hmm. i'm just wondering if there is some type of generic sign because i assume the main intent is just to get people to slow down and be aware on those blind corners yeah. if there is something more generic that might be more cost effective than having mm -hmm. us like have Signs specifically made. Okay. Um, maybe that would be another option. The only thing I would say about the generic ones is that they often people are just like whatever. They've seen that sign right. a million times, yeah. right? Like mm -hmm. if, if yeah. you're all of a sudden see a sign that you that it's new to you, you know, I, and you, you would have to come up with the language, but right. you might kill somebody if you come around this bend too fast. Like mm -hmm. it's going to get people's attention okay. rather than blind corner. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, Good point. Mm -hmm. That's just mm. my two cents, but um, it sounds like we'll revisit this. Yeah, we will. Right. All right. Thank you. Wanted to kind of Remind us. Yeah. Mm. Uh, anything else no. in terms of the road report? Thank you. Skip the recovery officer's report. Yeah, as Paul said, it, you know, it's becoming more and more frustrating working with FEMA. And you originally had like a pretty nice working relationship with those folks. Right. Yeah. yeah it mm -hmm. seems like the working relationships deteriorate over time and, and I don't know if it's based upon their workload or what. Uh, but, you know, they start off with meetings every week and you know, it's all great and they're very responsive. However, after less than a month, that you have to call them and say, okay, where's this project? And, uh, mm. you know, Danielle and I don't mind being proactive, but uh, they, sh they should reciprocate as well. So, mm. uh, anyhow, let me just move forward with that. That's my editorial for tonight. <laughs> <clears throat> so, if I could, I'd like to speak about Project 741333, which is the installation of the new sign. That new sign was to replace the sign at the uh, boat launch at Sabin mm -hmm. Line. So that that was delivered to the uh, town garage which and was subsequently delivered to my cellar and I programmed it last week. So it's programmed and ready to install. Batteries charged. Uh, so I don't know what uh, types of, well, I do know what types of permit he would have to pull, but he's on vacation, so I don't anticipate that mm -hmm. sign would be installed until after he gets back. I'd like to, I mean, uh, jumping ahead, we do have to talk about the fact that two of our signs might be ruined. Well, and if we do, if, if they are, and if the town doesn't vote to spend $10,000 or whatever to replace them, we might want to put that particular one in a different spot. Well, Back when, back when these things were installed, we did studies as mm -hmm. to where they should be mm -hmm. placed to be mm -hmm. as effective as you know, mm -hmm. speed radar signs mm -hmm. can. And those four places mm -hmm. were selected mm -hmm. based upon that criteria. Mm -hmm. Michael? Wouldn't the town insurance pay for those? <laughs> it won't. 
They're wrong? They were never listed as an asset. Oh, okay. No. okay. We tried that, Michael. Yeah, we did. Work. Oh, well. Yeah. So anyhow, this, this sign is ready to go, and it's just a matter of Alfie and his crew finding some time and getting the appropriate permits. Well, he was going to try to get the state to do it because they're, it's in the right of way. The permits allow folks to work in their right of way. But so, if we could get the state to do it. Well, they would be good <laughs> if they would do it. He said, so he was, who knows? that's where we left it last time, was that he was going to check with the district garage and see whether it would be, they have the equipment, you know, and anyways. So, so he, Alfie knows that it's yeah. here and he's ready yeah, to go. Knows, yeah. or, and mm -hmm. Sounds good. So it's programmed, if you want me to get into the, the weeds here for a little bit, the display range on this sign will be from 30 to 99 miles an hour. Uh -huh. 99 is the highest it can go. And the speed limit is 40 miles an hour. The tolerated speed will be 40 miles an hour. Flash digits, you know, that's, that's a variable, and that'll start flashing at 35 miles an hour. Uh, and there's an option to turn a strobe light on if you're speeding. Mm. But we were told by the ADA and the Vermont Department of Health mm -hmm. that strobes aren't good for some folks who have certain uh, infections. So mm -hmm. with that, that's off. So anyhow... But what about the 35? It starts flashing at 35? It's just the numbers, yeah. the not number the light. Starts, the digits will start flashing like you're at 35, 36, 37. And then okay. it'll show the speed all, I would the think it would, okay. all the way up to 99. Okay. That's as high as it'll go. But if it, if you're supposed to be doing 40 and it, and you're doing 40, it'll stop at 40, right? It doesn't. Yeah. It'll yeah. go 41. Okay. Zero. All right. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't think if mm -hmm. you wanted me to change when the digits start flashing, yeah. it could start flashing at one mile an hour. <laughs> yeah. You know, That's I right. Yeah. That'd be no, annoying to some folks. Mm. So in terms of the others that were shot, the two others that were shot, uh, the road crew has taken those down. So I'm going to go up to the uh, town garage and take some, take them apart, and send some photos back to the manufacturer of Traffic Logics, and see if they can determine whether or not these things are fixable. Mm -hmm. These signs are model number Safe Pace 250, and they're manufactured discontinued. Mm -hmm. So what I was going to do is uh, see if I can scavenge some parts from both of them and see if I can make at least one of them work. Mm -hmm. And what I'd also like to have Alfie do is uh, take the sign down by the boat launch and see if I can get that going. That sign, oh. that sign yeah. was uh, you know, damaged during the flood and it laid in the water for you know, like three or four days. So I'd like to take a look at that, mm. charge up the battery, and see if it'll work. Mm. So maybe between those three signs, I can get the one going. <laughs> Who knows? Skip, but, thanks for doing all that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Gives you something to do. <laughs> it's uh, not like rebuilding a motorcycle, right? I just got a new project. <laughs> so I want to get this done. So anyhow, those are the options, I think. Uh, our best to move forward for these speed radar signs. And if I cannot get any of them going, I'll let the select board know and let the board decide, mm -hmm. or actually the voters decide perhaps, if they want to you know, spend an extra $11,000 for new, two new signs. I think Tim what? did work on one sign in the past. Tim, my husband. Oh, Tim, okay. Yeah. I don't hear about yeah, every single project. Yeah. 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 There was. There's so many towns that have them now. You would think there would be a local contractor who has taken that upon themselves to be the expert, but maybe not. Well, there is a company. <laughs> there is a company in uh, Williston called Lafayette. Uh huh. They do guardrails and all that all stuff. All that stuff. They, they also do speed radar stuff. Oh. Too. oh. They were the ones who installed the four uh -huh. initially, I think, in mm -hmm. 2019 or something. I wonder if they make bulletproof ones now. Right. <laughs> you know, they don't. Mm. They don't. But we'll see. You know, it's just, just take them apart and see what goes on. Boy, there was a lot of shooting over the weekend. You must have been able to hear that, Skip. It was from coming up from up on the hill somewhere. It was me. 
Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody been past the other side this way? I'm just curious. I I don't really go that way in the village, but I'm curious if that one's working. That one's still working. It is working. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, Jane, the old Laurendale, talked about some shooting right by her house, and there was a sign. Is there a sign here? The, 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 the oh, show? yeah, there's one mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, yeah, I bet that was yeah, one of them. That was one. Yeah, that was, same yeah I didn't find other. out about that one until about a week after I found one's, out about this one. That one's just wounded. It does show... <laughs> Some mm. And it was a little off even before then. You know, it's like not all the little lights are showing up, but it's trying. Let's see what we can do. Mm. So, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is just briefly go over the report I was going to give at last oh. select board report. Uh, so, we do have one project that's now sitting in FEMA's, it's called the CRC Center in Puerto Rico. So they offshore, once a project is deemed complete in terms of documentation by our program delivery manager, they send me uh, some forms to sign. Mm -hmm. One is a small permanent work project, certification mm -hmm. and acknowledgement. I sent you folks all these mm -hmm. documents to commit to memory. <laughs> we did. The second one is a material summary record. The third one is a force account equipment summary record, and that's utilization of, you know, uh, dump trucks, graders, wheel loaders, wooden mm -hmm. trailers, stuff like that. And lastly, the force account labor summary. So the information that Danielle and I have given to FEMA, they turn around, fill out these FEMA forms, send them back to us to make sure they fill mm -hmm. them in correctly which in this case they did not. Yeah. So we had to reconcile that. And once that was reconciled, uh, I signed off on, on this report, and it's now in Puerto Rico, mm. being scrutinized by the CRC side. And according to the last correspondence I had with the program delivery manager, no news is good news from Puerto Rico. Okay. So. Anyhow, I guess it's moving along in the mm. FEMA minutia, so hopefully we'll get some funding pretty quickly back to us. Which project is that one? This is, uh, I forget the number, but it's Blake Hill Road and Old Quarry Road. Okay. And that was the first one to get almost to the finish line, right? Almost. It's almost there. And that's near and dear to my heart. Yeah. <laughs> All these reasons. And uh, last... We thought we were here briefly. I gave oh. these flow charts out. You guys mm -hmm. still have them? I got mine. I got mine. Probably. Show you one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah. It's going to look like I'm pretending to find it. <laughs> Robin, do you have one? I don't find it in here. Mm. We're okay, sharing. I've got one in the bag, bag, so I'll. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's wrong. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so mm. here we are. Arf, uh, arf, arf. Let's take, for instance, the uh, Lake Hill Road and Old Quarry Road. Uh, right now we're in phase three scoping and costing. And that's done in Puerto Rico. Uh, oh, wow. So with that, they're looking at developing a scope of work and validation that all the stuff that we sent them is appropriate. Uh, they're doing a cost development and, and validation to make sure that our costs that we've given them are out of line. And lastly, they'll do a compliance review just to make sure we're compliant with uh, the state of Vermont uh, purchasing laws, our purchasing procedures, and FEMA requirements. Mm. Once that comes back, then uh, that will come back to me and we'll have a meeting with the state and mm. the program uh, delivery manager and the final review will take place and then I will sign the final project review as complete. Mm. If you folks want me to continue doing that, do you feel comfortable with me signing as the applicant? The applicant in this process is, in effect, the town builder. 
but if, if you're you the POC, get, oh, right? P pardon? You, you're the POC. Yeah. I mean, we did appoint you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you mm -hmm. still feel comfortable with me signing stuff like I that. I do. It's okay. Yep, hundred percent. I do too. Mm -hmm. It's incredible to me how much, I mean, our simple little projects, you know, a few culverts and a bunch of earth moving and stuff like that, it takes so much detail. Can you imagine the big projects that most of the rest of the world is dealing with? Well, I wow. don't understand why they want so much detail. Okay. Yeah. You know, because it's our taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to be sure that um, it's spent you know, and obligated mm -hmm. correctly. So I don't mind doing it. Good. Thank goodness. And then finally we'll get into phase five, which is obligation and recovery transition. And so what FEMA will do is obligate the funds, and that means it will go to the state of Vermont. Hmm. And mm -hmm. then the state of Vermont will send to me a project plan <clears throat> that I'll have to sign saying that, yeah, this project is correct, it should be obligated, and then the next step in the process is a subgrant agreement will come out of the Department of Public Safety, and we'll have to sign that subgrant agreement in order for us to get funds going to Woodbury. <clears throat> I have no idea what that subgrant agreement document looks like, not a clue, but I'm hoping it will I, mean, I don't know if Brandy will be back to work, but mm. I'll need some sort of uh, accounting help with mm. our bank numbers, bank account numbers, so the funds can flow directly into our bank account. So I'll need that eventually. Can I ask a question? At this point, uh, a contractor has already been established for this project, or no? At this point, it's still not the this, this CRC. Okay, and that's that's this phase three stage. Yeah. I guess what I mean is that, um, you know, because you're, you're doing the phase three scope and costing, presumably that there must have been some contractors that came out to look to get us close to us, the costing. Everything's the been done by the town so far, right? Well, yeah, everything. There were a few projects that, you know, we used uh, someone to clean up the park here, mm -hmm. North Park. Mm -hmm. We used Chuck. Batch elder a couple of places. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're in compliance with all FEMA's contracting requirements. I see. Okay. You know, we followed our uh, procedures and you know, we're, we're in compliance. And FEMA has all, the, all mm -hmm. those documents too. Yeah, I, I, I realize my. I realize the, the, why my question didn't make sense. This is all work that's already been accomplished right. and completed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. It's not future projects that are coming up. Yep, I understand. Right. At least in this case. The, mm -hmm. There yeah. are a couple not the done. Bridges the bridges. The bridges. Right. Yeah. There are, I yeah. think, four projects <clears throat> that are done. Two uh, bridges, town highways 23, 24. Uh, county road extension mm -hmm. hasn't been started. And I got to sit with Robin to find out the difference between what the insurance company is going to pay for, you know, to fix the town office, the town yeah. office, and then I can whatever the mm -hmm. whatever the insurance won't pay, I can submit a form, and the town mm -hmm. will get money for that. That all makes a lot more sense to me now. So. In essence, if you can go to the last page, I don't know if you have the spreadsheet. Was, if not, I have copies of the spreadsheet. If not, I can just read off some of these. Here, here, are, here are a couple of spreadsheets. And I, I sent it in an email. Thanks, Mike. Around 10 o'clock this morning, too. So, which, there you go, Dan. It could be this is a brand new one. Oh, okay. This is a yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get it to print out on a one page. Well, I decided not to print it out. You shouldn't be able to print it out on one page. Well, you could. No, I printed it out four pages. Well, I mean, yeah. That's the old one. Yeah. I would add to be fun. I think this is oh, a this new is one. Updated yeah. Okay. It's I'll four pages long. Yeah. So okay. the last page shows that the total amount of money 
that sitting in the room waiting for their processing is $324,739.80. Mm -hmm. Of that, FEMA share is 90%, and the state of Vermont share is an additional 7.8%. So just on the projects that FEMA has in hand, Woodbury can expect sometime in the future total compensation of $317,595.52. Woodbury share of that 424,000 and change is $7,144 and 28 cents. Big ones. Well, that's something to look forward to. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I think Danielle and I will go out and have a cocktail. And a <laughs> Maybe even a pizza. I don't know. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, it's all sitting in FEMA's hands. Mm. And anything we can do, Daniel and I do, to uh, make them sure they don't forget about wood. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Again. Can't express that enough. I'll keep you folks informed, uh, especially if there's anything I feel uncomfortable signing. You know, there's a couple of things that surprised me uh, about Town Highway Bridges 23 and Town Highway 24 as well. Is that with the new way that FEMA and the state are looking at projects, they'll take, let's go back to this spreadsheet. They'll take the uh, approximate cost, which is the best cost we could come up with. Some are based on actuals, but the two bridges are based on the DeWolf engineering proposal. And the way they worded it, it's the... Uh, uh, There's really the a best, proposal. Yes, yeah. cost. So according to the state of Vermont, my contact there, FEMA <coughs> could possibly pay us the $457,000, and also pay us, what's the other one here? Five and change. Five and change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Send that money to us. And the money we don't spend, we can utilize. What? That's what I said, too. <laughs> and so I'm still waiting for clarification on that, because mm -hmm. I would feel very uncomfortable signing something like that if we get a million dollars in our hand and the project actually comes in at like 300,000 mm -hmm. for both bridges. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't, to me that just doesn't seem right. It's not right, so. Yeah. yeah. And the town would be due, if it was a million dollars that the town took, then there is also the um, percentage that, in co you know, contribution is 7.8%, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't know. Municipal tax rate hopefully would go down. <laughs> well, when we first started talking about those two bridges and that engineer's estimate, um, I was thinking, why well, the town can't even afford that 25%? We're talking about $200,000 hmm. for the town's percentage in that. But, but now that's no longer a concern. So let me just read you quickly a paragraph from my state con contact. And he goes on to say, with respect to small project obligations, that is to say, what FEMA determines will be the reasonable cost and the Consolidated Resource Center processes it, where the total project cost is determined. So say if they determine that you know, these costs don't seem out of line. Once those dollars are obligated, and if the town conducts the construction project for less FEMA does not de-obligate the funds for that project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> does not de-obligate. So, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Better save that email. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> it's up on my wall. <laughs> but, you know, something like that. I, just, oh. you know, I would be very hesitant to sign that. Mm. Probably the chair should sign that. Mm. So, Right. Thank you, Skip. Thank you. Any no questions? questions. All right. Uh, moving on. 
And it looks like we're almost right on time. Uh, Woodbury appointments. Um, it looks like uh, we do have two possible committee members, or not even possible, but like two folks that would be willing to serve on the Hardwick, uh, Woodbury Hardwick Rail Trail mm -hmm. Committee. Um, I would entertain a motion to appoint those two. Somebody would like to make that motion. I will make that motion. All right. Second. So the motion is to appoint Peter Halverson and Eric Moeller to the Woodbury Hardwick Rail Trail Committee. Um, any discussion? I was just going to fill you in on um, the obligations of the town as part of the agreement with the Granite Company. Is this who gives us the lease. And, the, and it says, the trail user groups have been invited by the town of Woodbury to participate in the operation of the Woodbury Rail Trail under a trail management system. The trail system in the town of Woodbury will be managed by a five-member board consisting of one representative of the owner, town, and each recreational group. The number of members on the board may increase or decrease. Members will be... Elected by the individual user groups they represent and present members will consist of someone from the select board, a representative of Swenson, I haven't talked to them yet. Mountain Tamers Snowmobile Club, I think Eric Moeller's mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. involved with that. Uh, Caledonia All-Terrain Travelers, uh, Pete Halverson is involved with that. And I can't remember his name. Um, Guy from Hardwick. Who's Danny Hale. Hmm? Danny, Danny Hale, Hale, thank you. Yeah, Danny Hale was very interested when I talked to him. He's interested in getting this back together. And he's willing to work on getting it going. I We have advertised for somebody representing a bike and pedestrian user, but haven't had any... Uh, members yet. It says a chairman secretary will be elected from the group to serve for the period of one year. Uh, the, the trail management board shall be responsible for developing rules and regulations, addressing violations, inspection of the trail system, signing the trail system, maintenance of the trail system, issues with landowners, review and approval of construction and repair projects, applications and implementation of available grants, establish law enforcement coverage when required, and to promote a sound working relationship between the trail owner, management board, town officials, trail users, and general public. This doesn't mention Hardwick at all, but I know when we had a uh, rail trail committee before it did have members from Hardwick mm -hmm. and even Callis but so far we're making a good uh, start on it. It says the trail management board will meet quarterly. Special meetings can be called to address any matters concerning the operation of the trail. But anyways that's a, that's a start. Michael Sadler might be interested in being Oh really? That I was thinking that. that too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and do we, do we have a? What, it sounds like that first first m member of the committee is a member of the select board. Do we have a representative mm, from no. this board that's willing? To do? I would. Do, I mean, it's near and dear to my heart. I just I'm like, oh, <laughs> another time commitment. Um, I would be willing to do it. Okay. If, unless yeah. you guys want to no, do it. No, yeah. that would be good. That would be perfect. You. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and I'll contact Swenson and see if they want to pick on somebody. It's really the the tr the committee has become defunct over the last few years because they just didn't have much to do. But then uh, this year there was some things to do, so some interest came up and. Okay. So there's a motion on the table to approve uh, Peter Halverson oh. and Eric Moeller for uh, to be. Uh, appointed as members of the Rail Trail Committee. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Those gentlemen are now members of the committee. Library trustee. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, sorry. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I realize now that I probably should have spoken up and asked for public, public comments <laughs> earlier. I don't know if you knew me, but um, I'm Mark Peralt. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm just, I'm here to express interest in the um, trustee position. The library uh, trustee. The library, yeah. Okay. So I'm Stephen Murphy, just to suggest that I can come today. Um, I wasn't sure how you'd like to go on. 
Well, we read we read your um, whatever letter you sent to Steve, and he passed it around. And have there been any other applicants? No. No. Mm. no I'm happy to come back to you next week. It makes more sense to talk to you at that time. But yeah, you. Want to tell us any more about yourself than what we? Um, you know, I, I think I, if you've seen the letter of interest I yeah. sent to Stephen, I don't know much about that. Mm -hmm. I moved to Woodbury about three years ago. I'm sorry. I moved here about oh, three years ago. Oh, okay, yeah. I lived in Montpelier. I've been in Vermont for about 25 years. Okay. Um, I don't have any direct experience working in the libraries, but I thought my background might might be a good match. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in you know doing some volunteer mm -hmm. work and yeah. getting to know people in the community a little bit more. Good. And the library board thinks that would be a good fit? We didn't discuss it as a board. Okay. But you don't have to. I'm we here. Yeah. Give my, my support to Mark. Yeah. 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 I appreciate your, your willingness to, to mm -hmm. serve. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we left it, and, it's a, and I'll leave it up to you, Steve, is that. If I recall, we will, that you would make a recommendation to the select board that we would listen to, which we're happy to do. And if you'd like to do that tonight, or you'd like to wait until you discuss it with the other members of the there's New really York no, board, it's you, not like they have to re re recommend one over another. Yeah, right. I so, just want to give you that yeah. uh, that uh, that option, but yeah. it's entirely up to you. Thank you. At the last meeting of the board of trustees, mm -hmm. we, we didn't take a position on. Mm -hmm endorsing an applicant but we did we did all agree that it was important to have the position filled as soon as possible so we're we're hoping mm -hmm. that the select board will make the appointment tonight Great. well i'll make a motion that we appoint mark to the library board sounds great yeah any discussion all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. Yeah. Oh, question how long of a term will it be? Just until town meeting? I think so. I yeah. think that's usually the way it works. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for doing it and for stepping up. Yeah, Sorry for the you. formality of like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just trying to keep things. Very interesting. I've been doing it a lot for 25 years, but I haven't attended the select board meeting. So I'm going to have a water to it. Yeah, we've got, other, we've got a, other opportunities <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> we still need a dog catcher. <laughs> 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 it's amazing how much brownie cover from the solid, <laughs> solid waste <laughs> district is a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Oh well, I'll let him go. Your last name for Shorts. P E R R A U L T. P E R R A U. -L -T. And you live on Cranberry Meadow Road? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't figure out from your number where that was. Do you know where the uh, Shaoshan, the temple? Is? Yeah. On that property. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. Then. Uh, well, welcome and thank you yeah. for doing it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> So the next, uh, uh, the next uh, appointment is to reappoint current members, Norm Eckine, Gary Smith, Natalia Zahn, George Sawyer, Grady Neal, Robin Durkee, and Alex Pelch to the Woodbury Fund Committee. Is there a motion to that effect? I will make a motion. All right. Second. And any discussion? All those in favor of making the appointments of uh, those individuals to the Woodbury Fund Committee, please say aye. 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 Now, Robin, you had a, she'd already written those letters, but maybe you can just change the date. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Moving on, uh, town office heating system. Sounds like we need to choose a vendor and sign the proposal. Correct. Well, after our last discussion, we all went off and got some opinions mm -hmm. on the uh, two proposals, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and there was a discussion uh, just to, to to circle back about mm -hmm. the heat pumps, um, and that might be something because I know Michael and Skip, you both brought that that suggestion mm -hmm. to the board. Mm -hmm. um, when I spoke to heating contractors, they suggested that in a municipal building, it would be unwise to have only a, um, a heat pump as the, as the sole heat source. Mm -hmm. um, and my weak understanding is that they are very much like, um, uh, they work better when they run all the time, but if it's a really cold day and it's, it's been turned down and you try to start it up to, to, mm -hmm. to, to, 
to work. That it, it's um, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bad idea, especially from the the cooling aspect. Mm -hmm. But that um, in a municipal building, at least the recommendation from the the contractor, who's not one that submitted a, a mm -hmm. one of these, was that we uh, no, I would, have I would, a I would agree with have you a heating do, system. Do need some type of backup for. Mm -hmm. And in the original assessment that was done by Efficiency Vermont, um, they strongly urged that the building be tightened up before any type of system like a mm -hmm. pump was you know, um, mm -hmm. put in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so do we want to run over those proposals again? Um, it seemed like the last time I didn't um, want to put words in people's mouths, but we, we can, leaning towards... Well, the other thing we have to do is approve mm -hmm. converting to gas. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we had uh, an estimate here from Gillespie Fuels and Propane. Uh, thermal pride, blah, 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 100. Propane, fired furnace with new plenums, move supplies in the basement and add a return in the basement. The old unit will be removed. The oil tank will be pumped out and two 120-gallon LP tanks will be set with an LP line. Right, and So those will be out and back of the office. And that estimate was $9,098.36. And they they also gave us an estimate on changing or staying with oil. And that was seven thousand five hundred and forty one dollars. And they also estimated uh, gave us a bid on installing a well troll uh, well tank and connecting to the existing water pipes. That was also called out on the insurance adjuster's mm -hmm. analysis. So that was $1,500. Currently, that's still working. Right. Oh, they're all still working. They're all still working. Yeah. yeah. But if we stay with oil, we have to put that liner in the chimney. Exactly. Right. Which yeah. is not in... Which would be fifteen to $1,800. That's, right. that's what this guy... But, but these other people estimated a huge larger amount. Yeah. Did Gillespie and their um, proposal, uh, would they remove that old fuel oil tank? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then we also had this uh, proposal from Lloyd. Um, the first, uh, there's a bunch of different ones, but uh, the first one is uh, Daykin DM97MC60000 MBU, MBTU, or BTU, modulating variable speed. Um, this was gas, I guess, $15,419. Uh, plus a gas line upgrade, another two thousand dollars. Ten year. Then there's a bunch of other things like maintenance agreements and um, maintenance plans that we could buy for thousands of dollars more, for a total of twenty one thousand dollars. And with Lloyd's, we would also have to get another contractor to actually hook up the gas. Right. Okay. Right. Lloyd's only installs yeah. the furnace. Somewhere here they did give a, oh maybe it's this oil one, uh, yeah the third, the third one. Propane furnace, this is another propane furnace, so the third one is a mm -hmm. oil. And that's to the tune of twenty three thousand. Yeah. With it. Oh, with that's what where they estimated the six inch stainless steel chimney liner would be four thousand two hundred and sixteen dollars. Yeah. So essentially, in in all options and all, Gillespie is the more cost effective way to approach this. Mm -hmm. And we already contract with them, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's my feeling that we should approve. I, I feel like the, the switching to propane and, and approving the Gillespie is the Gillespie, way to go. It's, um, they install it, you turn on the heat, it goes. They install the propane tanks, everything. Everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'm in agreement with you, Chris. So I'm... Um, 
Yeah. And they also told us when they came out, it was more than a month ago now, but anyways, he said this spring is kind of their slow season. So, but now they're to the point where you might not need much heat. So I told them, you know, if they come on a Thursday and can work on Thursday and Friday, they wouldn't have to worry about the people being in the building. <laughs> you can give them a key to the bulkhead maybe. And anyways, we'll work that out. Mm -hmm. So was that a motion? Yeah, I'll move that we approve uh, the Gillespie quote to install a Thermopride CLQ S1 100 propane fired furnace with new plenums. Move supplies in the basement and add a return in the basement. The old unit to be removed, the oil tank will be pumped out, and two 120-gallon liquid propane tanks will be set with a liquid propane line run to the furnace for a total of $9,098.36. I'll second that motion. Do we want to include in this motion the uh, oil tank as well, or are we going to do that as a second? Okay. Is it okay if we do that? Yeah. Is it a different one? Yeah. Which? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, uh, this, this here. We'll do. Did Lloyd's talk about that? They, uh, I don't think they did. Oh, that's they did either. The old unit will be new return duct. I'm sure. I'm sorry. What you're talking about? The we would do this in a separate motion. Oh, if oh that's okay, 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 sure, sure, yeah, yeah that part, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, so we will sign that. And now, now it sounds like there would have to be a discussion about whether the well tank, or sorry, the, it's the, it's a, it's a well, uh, what's it called? Pressure tank. Pressure yes. tank. Pressure tank. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the pressure tank is yeah. to be replaced. Yeah. And sounds like that was the adjuster's recommendation, right? So our right. insurance will cover mm -hmm. this. And it seems like now is probably the time. Okay. Uh, Everybody in agreement with that? I, I did have mixed feelings because, Robin, at one point, Derek, did Derek look at the pressure tank? I felt like he, he had... did, but I don't remember what he said. Okay. I was thinking that there, like, we hadn't substantiated that there was anything wrong with it beyond the insurance adjuster. But, but the insurance adjuster thought there was, so if they're willing to pay for it, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, why and not? It, I mean, it, it, the, all the plumbing for it is way down low by the mm -hmm. floor, so I'm sure it got it definitely did get flooded, get wet, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So, entertain a motion if somebody would like to do that. Um, I will make a motion to select um, Gillespie's quote and go with it for the. Well, extra 203 well tank to be connected to the existing water pipes and the old tank removed for, uh, for $1,501.42. Second that motion. That motion. Discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you, you guys. So, he gave us this proposal to sign. Proposal with a customer signature on the back. Shall I sign it? Please do. Okay. Thank Thanks, Steve. You. Thank you. Bye. All right. The municipal, so we're next moving on back to Michael, the Municipal Energy Resilience Program. Um, and apparently there's an application that needs a signature. So I don't have much to say about Planning Commission project. <laughs> talked about it a few times. We yeah. did talk, yeah. That the agreement can be signed. Yeah. So we, the undersigned parties, agree to be bound by this grant agreement, State of Vermont, by the and by the grantee. And then over here, there's oh, attachment V has uh, Chris Codius on here. Can we cross that so out? We should right probably. Chris Casey? Yeah, we should probably put your name on here as well. well if I'm the chair, maybe I should do it. Okay. He was the chair at the time. So, by the grantee. Okay. Okay. April 29. <laughs> Signature and then name, I guess, are being printed.
There you go. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Sure. Did we need a motion for that? Or? Uh, if it's signed. Yeah, okay. Don't no. worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. um, and I'm not sure who uh, is uh, to direct this piece to, but the property reappraisal. I imagine we're entertaining. Well, there's uh, four people on the, the uh, reappraisal oversight committee. Yeah. And I'm one, and I'm the only one that's here. John, Br John Reed and Steve Freihofner and Ron Wells are the other three, and we have had a couple of meetings. And there, was, there were two um, bids. I'm sure I've shared them with you at one point, but the first one was just not, just not appropriate at all. And uh, the second one we had to ask for, but thank goodness they were willing to give us one. Um, it's not going to happen until we're, we're a couple years out. But is that going to require that we get an extension? Because we had a, we do have a deadline, right? I can't remember now. When no, deadline our deadline was. was to get something done. Oh, okay. To get a plan. Okay. So there was some miscommunication among the board that put us behind a couple of months that uh, I've been working with the tax department and they're okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the recommendation from the reappraisal yes. committee? Yeah. That exactly. we go with. Yes, I don't know. Here's Skip has a your question copy. or comment yeah. to you guys. Skip. Just a question. What does the oversight committee do? We looked at the bids. We created the oversight committee so that there would be somebody to look at the bids and make a recommendation. And we got Steve, who was a former lister and an attorney. Yeah, <laughs> and Ron, who is a lister, you know, and, and John, who's good at everything. <laughs> yeah, so it, as it turned out, we didn't have much to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Two bids. Yeah. Sounds like this was the Two bids and, that and came one in. was going to work. And we also talked about whether. I brought up the silly idea that it, maybe we could find somebody else who wouldn't be so far out in there because I'm sure our RFP talked about a time. Uh, Let's keep it as far out as possible. Well, that's, <laughs> that's what we kind of decided. That's kind of what we decided. The downside is right now there are people who paid a lot of money for properties and they're still getting taxed based on what they were appraised at. Years ago, it catches up with us too in terms of school yeah, funding. Well, yeah, you know. Yeah, I think our common level but appraisals. The state, right, the state does look at those sales, mm -hmm. and they do some kind of magic. <laughs> well, I think that if I don't know how you all feel, but I, I think that if and you're on the committee, Dan, so it mm -hmm. really lists. But well, that's, if yeah, the, the committee does. Committee recommend. Committee recommends this that. Yeah, I was just kind of like looking through the agreement, um, but I would defer to the will of the committee. So you, you probably need a motion to um, yeah. accept. Is, is NEMRIC, is it New England, what does that stand for? New England Municipal Reappraisal Corporation? No. No. It's <laughs> Because they do, under the name Nemrick, they do a lot more than I just... That's what it is. Yeah, yeah it's res the RFC uh, skip thinks it's Resource Center. And that resource Center, yeah, that's it. Because they, do, the all, they do all Center. our okay. um, financing all system, accounting booking and system. And oh, so and we have, we're kind of familiar stuff. with yeah. this. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Great. yeah. Well, I'll make a motion that we um, approve the recommendation of the reappraisal committee um, to accept the reappraisal committee agreement from bid and agreement from Nemrick for a reappraisal of Woodbury to be completed sometime in the future. Any discussion? Um, no, I'm just I'm looking at the cost, but. I'm sure that we've got we got the money expensive. and yeah. all those years that we'll be waiting we're still getting money mm -hmm. money comes in every time there's a property transfer we get some minuscule percentage that goes into our reappraisal fund and um, it adds up 
You know, I think right now we got like 120 some, 20 something thousand dollars, but <coughs> it will grow before we end up spending it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think. I mean, he also said like, I think it said like for any additional parcels. Yeah, it was like a hundred dollars a parcel, hour, which is or, not very much at all. Oh, it said right. per hour. Did it say per parcel? Hearings. It, uh, it's hundred dollars per parcel, per and, parcel. and then one hundred fifty dollars okay. an hour um, if they have to attend hearings. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I. If we're at that point. So all those in favor of approving the reappraisal agreement with Nemerick, please say aye. 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 We all get the sign. Right. You have the original. You. Or is the this, this is the original. Okay. Do you have a Yeah. <laughs> Skip. Just a question. When do you expect the appraisal process to begin? Is that 2026? It's not for a couple of years, but. Um, yeah. Timeline July 26 to April 28, data collection and data entry. April to May of 28, field reviews. 28. Yeah. I think May we're 28, lucky to get yeah. that. So we're beginning, yeah. June 28th, Lodge Grand List. That's only, what, four years? That's crazy. But the state's the one that's requiring us to do it, and they know what's going on, so. I think there's a lot of municipalities in the same boat. Right. Having to wait. Yeah. All right. Oh. Our next agenda item is rules of procedure, and Diana, you were able to get a new model of yeah, the procedures so from VLCT. That. Start that all over again. All right. You want to keep that or no? Um, sure. And then, does that make sense? You're going to distribute it for us to take a look at that mm -hmm. on our own, and then come back at the next meeting to with I think suggestions. We'll have to because it is quite a lot longer and. More complicated than okay. the other one. All right. So is, you'll get that to us, or I just, did already. You did, all right. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I, know, I put it in. I put it in my car. Make sure I look at it. Now. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Your homework. Yeah. yeah. You only have two weeks this time between meetings. <laughs> all right. Mm hmm. All right, updates and other business, um, vandalism and solar signs. I think we've kind of we talked, about, we talked that. about that in the road commissioner's report. Yeah. Um, and then it's up to the board. We, we I, Oh, I'm please. sure, please. Somebody came in the other day and they said there is a class four road from East Hill that goes over to Keene Farm. No, uh, Keen yes. Farm Road, I think, is class three. I don't know three. if it's a class four road anymore. Um, Bliss Road does continue, and Keen Farm Road does continue, and they do yeah. meet. But um, I don't think they're class four anymore. I haven't looked at them. I mean, it's. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they are. They might still be. Um, they do meet. Um, oh, because so he walks up through there with his dogs, mm -hmm. and he says, "There's a sign up there now." that says no entrance past this point or something like that. Mm -hmm. now, and his question was, did the town put that sign up or did somebody else put that sign up? I did, said, I am not aware of the town putting the sign no, up. Did it just go up recently? Like it wasn't there and then it, he noticed it was there? Right. Okay. Hmm. Sounds like a question yeah. for Alfie. Yeah. Yeah. Or anybody who wants to go out there, we can look at the maps and I see whether... The road map because I have a feeling that... Um, but there is somebody on the class, somebody who is building on the class four portion of Keene Farm Road, yeah. where you go straight beyond the houses that are already yeah. there. Daniels. Robin, does it say no vehicular traffic? No. No, it says that, no. That wasn't the word he used. Because mm. yeah. um, I know that town trails, I think sometimes are, um, when they're not class four, but a step below the right. kind of trails. There's one, there's one that they restrict town. vehicular traffic. Yeah. And so if that's a, 
town trail and not a class it's not four. Not a trail. No. Okay. Which probably should be, but yeah, I converting would, I something to a trail is a the, lot of work. The road town road map to see yeah. if, if those two roads um, they are on the map to a certain extent, but I don't know if they're on the map to where they actually meet. And then there's that whole okay. sand ledge road thing that goes through that same area. Right. That was kind of. Confusing. And out in the woods there, there are at least two old houses that I'm aware of that are just really? kind of falling down. Yeah. And yeah. One with a lot of expensive equipment inside of it. Huh. Um, but it's kind mm. of a wild area up there mm. in the woods. Mm. I mean, as far as people building things and stuff. Well, that's where the original hippies that moved to Woodbury live, right? Up on the East Hill? Probably. Yeah. Back in the 70s? There's one really nice house that they used birch trees for the floor joists. Really? And they never took the bark off, no. so of no. course the trees have rotted and, the, and no. no one's been in it for a long time, but there really? was a, some very expensive equipment underneath all of oh, that. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Huh. And the second thing is just an informational thing. I was coming back from Hardwick today. And I noticed that the notice sign at the water tub, somebody's already taken it down. Already. Mm. They did put it up then. They yeah. did. Mm. Do you know how they put it up with a, with a post or with, with a... With a post and it, I'm thinking that the sign was stapled to a board. Mm -hmm. mm. Hmm. But Elton's Surprise. got two more of the signs over to the office. Maybe he'll have to put plexiglass over and then screw that to the board. And this is just a sign that says that it hasn't been tested? Is Correct. That, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That might be a losing battle. Yeah, really. Yeah. Right. But we'll see what happens. I, I do have an update that I can share with the local hazard mitigation plan. Mm -hmm. um, so I have been um, kicked out of the club for the time being because of my involvement with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, <laughs> which was one of the bidders. But the bids are being reviewed and researched and vetted, et cetera. Mm. So at some point, the remainder of the committee will have a proposal to the select board. What happened to the one that was going to be late? Did she ever? I, th I think that um, that it was allowed. For, yeah. yeah. So you did have to, that's we good. We had four bids. Really? Wow. Yeah, there are four bids that they're reviewing, but oh. I haven't seen them at all. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want you to be. Fine by me. It's, it's yeah. gardening season. Well, that's unless. <laughs> so, but that's not the planning commission. That's its that's, own committee, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 The committee is um, Norman Atkin, mm -hmm. Jim Schleiphelm, and John mm -hmm. and myself. Okay. Um, I'm not locked out. <laughs> Okay, so also under other business, should we talk about what happened last week? Um, or just sort of... What happened last week? Um, <laughs> can we actually, before we start, can we just back up for one sure. second? Yeah. So your first thing, Robin, I saw you write down talking to Alfie about the signage, so yeah. I assume you're going to do that. Um, do, does one of us need to go and look at the tax maps and see if that... Is a town road, or is that something that you're gonna do and get back to the person? Or I can look at them. Yeah. Okay. There is a yep. town road map. I think it's posted in the what used to be the select board meeting. And so uh, yeah, this is all the wild they were. It's always was. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or you can look it up online. Right. It is. Yeah. Just. And that's current. The one online is totally yeah. up updated. Yeah. Well, to the yeah. most well, recent. The, yeah, the map is not really current. Uh, but yeah. there haven't been very many changes. Well, okay. the one on the on the wall it's isn't pretty, necessarily pretty current, accurate. but yeah. I just wondered, like, if you looked at that map and it looked like a road was class four, is it possible that it's actually been thrown up and it it isn't class four anymore? No. Okay. There are some roads that are listed as class four that I um, just a few, like around Nichols Pond. Um, that I know are just people's driveways. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. what, how yeah, they there's quite a few of those. Way, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But just going through the process of getting those downgraded, um, it's a lot of work. Yeah. You got to notify everybody and have hearings and mm -hmm. things like that. So some people might want their 
their roads to continue their driveways to continue to be town roads even though they don't get Especially anything the but then the I was going to say <laughs> yeah for sure but then there are some that are gating those town roads and shouldn't be there is a class 4 road up um, by um, Coit's Pond East Long that is gated off um, I wouldn't know that it's a class 4 road mm -hmm. because there was a better road built probably mm -hmm. by EBI. Mm -hmm. So there are situations like that that I know of, mm -hmm. um, again, that are um, mm -hmm. the reality of what's there um, is not what's on the map. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the map isn't, isn't really current. Yeah. It's just a whole other task. I right. started to do that <laughs> when I was on the select board. And, um, yeah. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, you know, I, I think when we did replace a bridge to somebody's home and discovered it was a class four road, it did sort of start a select board discussion. But it was like mm -hmm. opening up a can of worms mm -hmm. um, with similar events like what happened last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah. Well, if you look at the nine one one map mm -hmm. that defines mm -hmm. class four roads, trails. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And I've never looked at that. Is that also online, like on the town website, or? It's not. Okay. This should be a current version at the town offices. Okay. And that shows roads, properties, whatever? Well, it doesn't show parcels. Okay, but it shows the roads. Okay. We well, used to have a link to that. I could send you a link to the online app, which does show parcels. Um, oh, really? Yeah. And the 911 yes. map? Yes. Yeah. Really? Hmm. And that's the whole state, and then you can zoom into Woodbury, I take it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, cool. I, I would actually be interested if you don't mind sending it. That'd be great. The link. Mm -hmm. So I do now remember what happened last week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just came to me. <laughs> yeah. That. So I was thinking, I don't think, hopefully it's not going to be a, become a problem for this board to have people who are in here and being unruly, but I really don't want that person to be going after the person he was complaining about last week. Mm -hmm. Um. So I was gonna. I did call the sheriff's department today to find out what's involved in getting a no trespass order or a restraining order. I don't know if that would do any good, but I didn't hear back. So, and do you think we should do that? I mean, we're not gonna see Brandy for a few more weeks, I'm sure. But I have mixed feelings, I guess, on it. I mean, he's not. The person did not come again tonight, which is a good sign. Yeah. But I do think that that kind of thing can't be tolerated. We can't, it, it's not okay for mm -hmm. someone to come and hijack a mm -hmm. meeting and um, refuse to leave. Mm -hmm. So, mixed feelings. You mean we could do something more? Like uh, uh, If you're talking about getting like a no trespass order, I, I have mixed feelings, I guess. When half of me thinks, let's let sleeping dogs lie, you know, maybe it'll just never mm -hmm. happen again, which would be great. Um, Maybe we wait, and if it does occur one more time, then we mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'm curious. Well, I was thinking saying. about maybe doing some kind of an order to keep him from hassling the delinquent tax collector. Oh, um, I see. Not um, coming in here. He hasn't, to anyone's knowledge, reached out to her, though. Oh, yeah. That's has, what it was all about. Well, he came here about it, but, I mean, he hasn't gone, like, to her house or oh, no. anything no, like no. that. Oh, no. But he's tried to. In fact, he came into the office one day when the... Reappraisal Oversight Committee was meeting one Saturday, one Friday morning, I think it was. But mm -hmm. his complaint was that he's not getting, he's been asking for a meeting uh -huh. by email and he hasn't been offered a meeting. Mm -hmm. So you can see why. I can see why. She, yeah, yeah, she shouldn't have to give him a meeting. I mean, right. If he claims he can't understand the process, that's just not true. Because he can. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, meeting doesn't seem like it would be at all it helpful would be like in a any way. One sided meeting. Yeah. 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 Less yeah. yeah. I think, um, you know, I had a, I feel like Montpelier had a very similar situation mm. um, not that long ago. Steve Whitaker. Uh, it, I think you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was public comment, mm -hmm. but uh, they were given a certain time period to mm -hmm. uh, do their public comment and refuse to mm -hmm. cede the floor or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
were removed by Montpelier police, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think that case mm -hmm. was taken up and he won. I think the city lost. Mm, really? Yeah. Okay. So I think um, Interesting. it may be worthwhile, uh, and I know it's expensive, but if we, if, it, if we need to, it might be worthwhile mm -hmm. consulting a lawyer yeah. before we do anything okay. as a town. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you, could, you could probably get some free information from Vermont Legal Center. I yeah. happen to know <laughs> from a conversation outside of here that um, Steve Murphy did some research um, and I'm not sure when he plans to bring that to us, but I know he's really good at that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So um, maybe we can wait and see what he's mm -hmm. been able to dig up um, mm -hmm. and then kind of go from there. And I asked a couple folks about how to proceed if, mm -hmm. if, if in fact, we end up in a situation where we, don't, um, we can't accomplish business because this happens mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And in the event that we have to, and I think this is the last resort, we can go to remote meetings. Mm -hmm. And um, we may have to have one person physically present but through remote meetings we can mute certain um you know once public comment is over mm -hmm. and you made your comment we're done you can mute that that um mm -hmm. that person who's, who's in the, yeah. who, who is refusing to see the floor mm -hmm. yeah. i do know that, that at this point post pandemic that um it would be called it's like a hybrid meeting and but you do have to post and have at least one person present physically yeah. in a place yeah and, then everybody and all the equipment and all that stuff I think for just the a laptop to... that they can be um have yeah. access to i yeah. think is all you all they need really yeah mm -hmm. But I'm saying it's have, a last resort. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Okay. I'm not suggesting we do that. But if we yeah. are, are in a position where we cannot, um, mm. we can't do town business, we may mm -hmm. have not have a choice mm -hmm. um, otherwise. Mm. So. Okay. Okay. Anything else before we mm. move on to? Because uh, we still have. Um, uh, bills and payroll orders, and we were going to discuss the policy um, regarding um, our employee policy regarding sick time and personal leave and how we approach that. Uh -huh. Yeah, and maybe just a quick review of our. You headed out? Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Have a good night, Scott. You want to stay for this exciting <laughs> bills and records uh, conversation? It's really <laughs> so, will you be doing the employee stuff in the second session? Yet. I don't think we need to. I think, okay. uh, you know, we're, it's just a policy review, I think. Okay. Yeah. And, um, so you, so thanks, I'll, Kip. I'll stay here to take notes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Please. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I am going to ask you to re-sign this fresh, clean copy of the personnel policy, but we can do that. Just, okay. So, and so, just to have a clean copy that we can make copies of. I think just to just to summarize what we've what we've uh, discussed so far is that um, when we have an employee who has um, run out of sick time and uh, has no more sick time, they uh, but you know obviously things come up. People continue to get sick even mm -hmm. if you have uh, used up all your sick time. Um, what happens? Uh, to a full-time employee when they no longer have sick time but they cannot attend work and um, so far we've reached out to neighboring municipalities um, to find out what that uh, has been you know what they do and and typically that employee is doesn't work that day and is not paid for that day um, and that is not really highlighted very well in our personnel policy, right? Like that is kind of like, if I, if I understand, we don't have like a... Well, yeah, the people I've talked to said it's like obvious. I don't think Somebody it's doesn't, obvious at all. Doesn't, but. <laughs> doesn't uh, have paid time off and doesn't come to work, they just don't get paid. And then, you know, I don't know. I don't think that anyone is necessarily suggesting that they I should be paid. Talk, that is not I did talk to, uh, let me see my notes for that. I did talk to BLCT on this one. Oh, yeah, she said they just go off payroll. But so, it, and then she said if it becomes a problem, like a chronic, um, lack of attendance that, that that affects the work, then you deal with it that way. But I don't think we've, that'll be up to the uh, supervisor. Supervisor meaning? 
Not us, or right. I guess potentially us. Yeah. Well, yeah, eventually, yeah. but first it should be the person who's in charge of the person who's chronically absent, who yeah. talks to him about what's up with that. The VLCT was more concerned with making sure that uh, that person gets whatever um, support and help they can, they need, like the Family Medical Leave Act, which is in here somewhere. Um, if you have a, a, like a chronic disease or something like that, there's a way to. Uh, they can, you can apply for um, extended leave time, correct? Yeah. 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 So Liz, I know you wanted to. You, you wanted to. Yeah, Speak to it. <laughs> I have some, so I came up with a couple of recommendations for wording for our employee policy. Mm -hmm. um, just some changes that we could make. I know we have a brand new fresh one, but we can make amendments to it, I believe. <laughs> um, that would maybe clarify the situation a little bit and give us some flexibility too, because I feel like, you know, it may be a case by case thing. And um, just for the record, uh, I hear what you guys are saying about a person just not being paid for their time, but I feel pretty strongly that it's not fair to the taxpayers if that is something that happens on a regular basis um, oh, well. because the cost of insurance is a lot. And I think, you know, we, um, we do have a pretty generous sick time policy. So if someone's going beyond that, I think it, you know, case by case uh, probably makes the most sense. Um, so anyway, I just wrote a couple things that we don't necessarily obviously have to decide on right now but um it was kind of my best crack at putting some wording in that I thought would be helpful um so there were two before you do this can i suggest that you use um at, at the discretion of the supervisor yep yeah, sure thank you i will change that Um, so, in the employee policy under Section 7, Hours of Service, um, it pretty much just kind of gives an overview of the expectations for when the road crew will be there, and it, it basically says that it's determined by the road commissioner. Um, there's some more to it than that. It goes on about lunch breaks, but without taking anything away from what's there, I'm proposing that we add something like at the discretion of the supervisor, an employee who has been absent during regular work hours due to illness or other reasons may make those hours up by working outside of regular hours within the same pay period. Um, and that's just, you know, that would be at, at the supervisor's yeah, discretion. Would, yeah. It gives a little bit more flexibility. So if somebody has to miss a day and there's an opportunity to make up the time in that pay period and it doesn't affect the work <coughs> negatively, it seems like it. Well, you know, would be but, to, but if one person, say they have Friday, they don't work Friday afternoons, uh -huh. if they leave one person to work that day or on a Saturday or something like that, that doesn't make sense because they work uh, as a group. So that's why it's at the discretion of the supervisor. I think it would depend very much what there is for work. Mm -hmm. If it's a time when we're plowing, you know, and uh, one of the guys is plowing on a Saturday and wants to use mm -hmm. that time towards his regular time mm -hmm. or you know there could be a number of ways where I think it could work um can it do you mind if I and Robin I think you have a so you're allowing them to take time before they've earned time well within the same pay period I think yeah but if they're out sick on Tuesday uh -huh. they're not making up the time until Saturday yeah. He didn't have any time here. So we're not talking about anybody specific. Like right now we're um This is a we're policy review. We're general general, policy, general review. policy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, even me, if I was out of my sick time, I was out sick on Tuesday, I can't come and work on Saturday because I used that time before I have earned it. I get that. I don't as long as it's in the same pay period. I don't see why there's a problem. I think, Maybe um, there might be one that I'm not like realizing. Well, I think I think that the, the I think that maybe what you're su suggesting is that there's not an assumption of um, uh, uh, payment for so if, if say so an individual an employee is out sick on Tuesday, mm -hmm. but they have the opportunity to plow on Saturday um, for whatever reason that the, you know they would not. They don't go into it assuming that they will make those hours up later. 
mm -hmm. but that there might, at the discretion of the, and I'm not even sure if this is legal, if we can do this or not, um, at the discretion of the supervisor, they can apply those other hours to their sick day time. Is that, right. does that understand it? So there wouldn't be an assumption of um, taking time without, I, it could get very confusing, I mm -hmm. think. Um, I think it's I don't know. I think if, if it seems to me like if we're talking about one week and one day of um, not showing up and not having any paid leave and then the person has to has to work on a, a plow go plowing on Saturday seems like that could end up as regular hours yeah, rather than overtime maybe, hours? Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. yeah. That is good. Is that, but that's what you're suggesting, right? It is what I'm suggesting, yeah. Like that it would just be straight time. So if, say, a person missed work on Tuesday but had time on a Saturday, which would have been overtime, um, I'm suggesting that, you know, at that's the discretion of the supervisor in situations where it makes sense and it's not detrimental, mm -hmm. um, that it would just be, yeah, put towards the. Mm -hmm. The missed time. Um, Assu yeah. Uh, this is all assuming they that, that that's they what they run out of the the fifteen days of sick time that they're originally given. Uh, I guess I would say not necessarily. Like the way I'm thinking of this is that if it makes sense and if it's not causing problems with work, like say somebody was low on sick time and knew it and was just like worried that they were lower than they ought to be. Maybe they could do this and then still have some hours mm -hmm. on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I can see you shaking your head. You're not going to change my mind. Yeah. 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 He has a well, taxpayer. I'm okay. voting that down. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not that if, if the person knows that they have no, I mean, they shouldn't be taking vacation time when they have no paid leave. Unless they have a really good reason. I mean, it might be a holiday or something like that. But if they're sick, they're sick and they know they're not going to get paid, you know, I don't know. Well, so Seems let me just throw this me. out and I'm going to kind of point it at you, Robin. If it ends up being a situation where it's either this or the person just doesn't work and doesn't get paid for the time, but is still getting benefits, I, I would rather see the work being done. It would be prorated benefits. Uh, yeah, one three hundred and sixty fifth of a year's worth of health insurance. You really think that's enough to bother with? But it's not only health insurance. Well, I know, but you know, just just an example. It's it's a small amount. But I'm I do agree that whether it's a small amount or not, I think there has to be a line. If people are getting benefits, um, they need to be working the amount of time that's expected in order to earn those benefits. Um, so to me, this is a kind of a way of like helping with that. Um, I don't know if I should jump ahead because I do have, I had an other, so that was one and then I had a second one. Um, and I don't know, it sounds sure. like maybe we're not going to answer this tonight. Um, I would love, I mean, I would love to hear what you have to say, but I would, I would yeah. love some time to think about it yeah, before I um, mm -hmm. made any suggested, uh, mm -hmm. voted on any changes that we made tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Can I ask one question about sick time? If an employee is out three consecutive days and they're still out on that fourth day, is it written in there that they need a doctor's note? We it's did put not, that in. Did we? Yeah. Okay. I actually have it. We did put that in because that was one thing that Brandy was mentioning. Oh, uh, let's see. Are you sure we put it? Oh, well, here we go. I'm just, I have it in front of me, so. Okay. An employee using sick leave yeah. for more than three days shall provide medical verification, parentheses, a doctor's note, or other evidence that the sick leave is justified. That's what that says. Um, so, are you guys ready to hear yeah. my other suggestion? Okay. Mm -hmm. So this one uh, would fall under section 22, which is the sick leave section. Um... And bear with me. I'm just trying to make sure I phrase mm -hmm. this in a way that makes sense. Um, Mini sentence. Yep. Okay. 
uh, so this is basically just an addition to everything that's already there. So no other changes except to add um, kind of a reiteration of what I was hoping to add in the other section and then a little bit more. So an employee who has used all of his her sick time and misses work due to illness may use vacation or personal time for the absence or at the discretion of the supervisor. Um, at the discretion of the supervisor may make the time up by working outside of regular hours during the same pay period. In the event that an employee has no paid leave time and working outside of regular hours is not beneficial to the road crew, the employee may take unpaid leave. This is at the discretion of the select board only and, and I don't know how I would word this so I, I kind of just wrote it in my own words, and will automatically trigger a meeting between that employee and the select board and the road commissioner to discuss frequent absences, determine if FMLA is suitable, and discuss or set limitations for taking unpaid time. Um, that was kind of a mouthful, you guys. Yeah. Um, we'll want to see it in writing. Um, but to me, adding that would give us the flexibility to, at our discretion, give someone the opportunity to take unpaid leave. And I just want to clarify for the record, for you and anybody who might be watching, I'm not in agreement with doing that, but I think if it's at our discretion and it's written in the policy, at least it's an option that we have. And then, you know, it's up to us to figure out if we're going to mm -hmm. go that route or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I hesitate to get too involved with personal management problems that are somebody else's duty but well we at some I mean, point. we're in charge of the personnel policy so we do need clear mm -hmm. guidelines for all these things to avoid problems but you sign this to so we can get our original yeah. well copies I, made if it's okay <laughs> thank you this and um, this is the original one yeah, that yeah, we yeah. approved on okay. the 25th of March and if it's okay maybe we revisit this next week and after we've had some you want to write it up so we can yeah I'll type it up for you guys um just to look at it is this is just my throwing out my thoughts like mm -hmm. obviously I'm mm -hmm. open to mm -hmm. whatever you guys think yeah. but I do think we need I, I think we've got to have mm -hmm. this in the policy right because otherwise it it's just going to be a question anytime oh. that ever comes up. Yeah, I don't agree. Um, and then in terms of doing something like this, is this also something, that, that can we put anything in our personnel policy or, you know, is, that, is it usually those, vetted by someone? They, policies? Well, this whole thing was vetted by the League of Cities and Towns. They have a special mm -hmm. process whereby you can <laughs> send it in and that's why a lot of this stuff that, that's in here now is just based on laws that weren't sure. even considered the last time we did the personnel policy. So like Family Medical Leave Act and some of these other mm -hmm. things that go on and on. So it would be helpful for me to know even if this would pass their vetting mm -hmm. before I even... Um... I could also, aside from typing it up... I could call them or email them and try to just get. See if that language. Oh, this Ju yeah. this yeah. one woman that I. Or that you're still no, she's gone. She's gone. Okay. But there is a Julie McKenzie who is the VLCT employment attorney. She's the one that I talked to, and she said, "Yeah, just take them off payroll for days that they don't come in." I mean, if in the but event, I think that. that I think that it would be, before we even consider this, it would probably be worthwhile to know whether we can do this. That makes sense. So um, that's probably a first. Otherwise, it's a non-issue, yeah. non right? Okay. Uh, if you don't mind doing that, that no, would be great. That would give us some information to deal with. Okay. So now we have the exciting, this is, I hate this part, is the um, approved bills and payroll orders. Oh, God. Because yeah. um, I don't know how to do it. Oh, um... I got a crash course from Brandy. All right. That was very helpful, which I can. Can you pass me you the uh, <laughs> small package? There. You need this one? Yeah. Yeah. You've done this one, Liz? Yeah. Oh, I haven't done anything. Okay. Okay. So you don't need me to hang around for that. Did right? you get this? We'll just move to approve them. And I yeah, get, I would think 
Yeah. Even if Jerome, you wanted to leave, we could put it into the minutes. That is that true? Yeah. That uh, you know, we would have made a motion to approve these bills and records, and then um, there'd be no other business and the time of adjournment. That's I think. what I've been writing in the minutes is that the bills you know, were approved. At the They're always meeting. approved. Yeah. yeah. And I always change it and say the bills are approved, period. <laughs> when I was on the select board, we used to get there like a half hour or more early before mm -hmm. people arrived and go through the mall and have them out of the way. But sometimes it's harder, mm -hmm. harder to do that these days. Yeah. Also, um, just a point of order, the personnel policy discussion probably should have been on the agenda. Yeah, well, I had put the executive, yeah, executive session for this reason, and then there was discussion about not doing it in an okay. executive yeah. session. Yeah, well, we, so, no big deal to me. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. can make us think about it. I thought we could yeah. make adjustments and additions to the. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that okay. should have happened at the beginning. We did. We did. Oh, you mm -hmm. mentioned the. Personal. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. We yeah. did it quietly. But yeah. <laughs> and maybe that needs yeah. to be a motion mm -hmm. in the future. Like, oh, I don't yeah. think so, though. It doesn't I think we can. No, I yeah. must have missed that. Can you look at that. We did at the beginning. Okay. Look at that policy. Procedural oh, rules the there. <laughs> They're crazy. They, they say, you know, only adjustments can be only made as the first order of business, and it's really, really strict. It's too much, but whatever. You know, we All right, how do, I do, do what we uh, can okay. do to so get things done. So this is what showed me is if you go through you it. Just hang around and wait for those? Or oh, we can probably be pretty down. fast. I can drop them either or drive in. So I would line them up this way. That's just how I like to do it. And I look. Are we adjourned? We're not adjourned, but um, if you want to stick around and watch us approve the bills, you're welcome to do it. <laughs> um, the, mi the minutes, the minute, the written minutes will. The general public. Yeah. The general public watches the bills. So Chris, a lot of times. Um, Previously to you being on the board, um, when we hadn't done these yet, Chris Codius, as the chair, would say that we, at the beginning of the meeting, that we haven't done it yet, but we're going to do it, and then we would sort of check that box and move on. Yeah. So I don't know if we can just do that and then adjourn and then do this after. I think so. I mean, I think... No. Can't, no. This one is... Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I think we'll, let's, why don't we we'll move to adjourn, adjourn and yeah. then we'll, yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Jerome. <laughs>